And live we go here on uh, Wednesday, the 20th of March, yes. the day after um, our friends in the eating industry went to Europe to talk to the Eurocrats and MEPs there. Uh, the replay of which, the recording of which we played in before the show. And if you sat and heard that, that's a lot of what we're going to be talking about tonight in amongst various other things too. So it should all be good. That's going to be tonight in VT Talk. As you will see though, tonight my guest is my very good friend, Dave Kitson, who's been following this um, easily as much as I have, haven't you, Dave? Uh, it's got to be close, yeah. It's, it's, it's close to our hearts, very close to our hearts. Uh, and yes. over my left shoulder, the exquisite effervescent loveliness. The <laughs> Why do you always laugh when I say that? <laughs> I have no idea. The exquisite effervescent loveliness, that is Sav. Um, and the three of us are going to be uh, not taking your calls tonight because the technology for that is poorly bad in bed with a shawl on and both feet in one sock, waiting for the doctor to come and rub its chest with RY4. Or mentholated our wi for we don't know which but either way on um we sav will be taking all of your comments in chat um and and feeding them in and she's been taking comments from what we were playing in before but i suppose really what we need to do is play the titles then we can get on with the show so hello good evening and welcome to vt talk And here it is, VT Talk as ever was. And if you have listened to um, what happened yesterday at the stakeholders meeting with the uh, electronic cigarette industry in Brussels, um, then you'll know what we're going to be talking about. If you are just watching this on video on demand, we will be making the whole thing available on, now let me get this right, Dave and Sav, it's going to be on our Facebook page. Yep. Yes. We're going to have it as well, if we can, on the same page as this show will be on, on our website at www.vapertrails.tv and we'll stick it on Google, we'll shove it everywhere we can, so there's no way you're going to be able to miss it and it's well worth listening to. Now Dave, I know you sat and listened to this at some great length and uh, I really want to get, just straight off your overall take on the whole thing and kind of your gut reaction what's your feeling on it my gut reaction is uh that well put it this way i don't feel very confident um i was skeptical that the uh the industry was going to actually swing this in our favor at the beginning uh but having listened to what i heard yesterday uh, despite, you know, and I don't want to seem brutal here, uh, there were a lot of people there saying a lot of things that I did agree with, but it didn't sound to me like it made the slightest dent in Envy's agenda to me. I would, I would, I tend to agree with you. I mean, I've been making a few notes while we were listening through uh, to all of that. Are there any bits of it that stand out to you? There's a few, but, but you know, if I had to summarise why I don't think that, 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 hearing yesterday what, what, what was it it was a stakeholder hearing is that what they called it um well th there were there were actually two uh two stakeholder meetings one which took place before the e-cig uh, vendors were in there was the tobacco companies and uh, that that's also available to be listened to um I've, I've i have listened to that and they had exactly the same kind of format three minutes presentation and then q a afterwards but yes, it was a stakeholder meeting for people that are in the supply chain. Right, um, now, okay. My, my understanding is that, um, that the Envy Committee was not expecting that the ESIG part of the whole thing was going to be contentious or, you know, they thought it was just going to go through on the nod. People trying to shout it down, that's why they everybody got restricted to three minutes, I guess. Yeah, pretty much. I think that's probably yeah. the case. 
Well, um, well if, to answer your question, if I had to summarise, you know, if I had to pick out uh, something that, that stood out from that meeting for me, it was that that the industry across Europe does not have a clear grip on how they would like to see e cigs regulated. There was no unity. There were a few different counterpoints and then a few more that I wasn't really sure which side of the fence they were sitting, frankly. But we heard arguments there to include e-cigarettes in the tobacco products directive, but with a more sensible minimum uh, uh, nicotine, nic nicotine level, i.e. not 4 milligram, something more like 50. And I think we heard 24 mentioned at some point in there. Yes. But then on the other side, we had people saying that they should be. And the, the, the Dutch guy who actually opened the discussion uh, and uh, T. Vecker uh, were saying that they should be classified as tobacco products. So, you know, regardless of what you think the correct route is there, because I don't think either of those are the correct route, but I'm not an idiot. I understand that the compromises have to be found and you have to concede a bit and all the rest of it. But the thing that came to me, and Linda McCavern, uh, the chairwoman that, 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 that we heard quite a lot of during that, she had considerably more than three minutes, I noticed, um, she, she seized on that and exploited that point. I'm oh. hearing that some people want it in, some people want it out. It, it, I mean, she, the, the one thing that did come across about Linda McCavern, and I've got to say this, she's a sniper. She's not by any manner of means dumb. Um, and she struck me, and, and that's not the first uh, one of these meetings that we've seen her speak at, is it? No. She strikes me as a very skilled politician. And basically, she cuffed the whole lot off. I don't think they even made a slight dent in that particular session yesterday. I mean, the, the hope has got to be that there's more stuff going on in the background, that the, 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 the people have made inroads a bit more deeply. There did seem to be some acknowledgement, perhaps, that the, li the lower limit needs to be reviewed and, and, and that that was kind of, to paraphrase, up for discussion still. Um, but the arguments that were being put about, you know, whether it should be uh, excluded from the directive Let's face it, the two biggest EU uh, slanted uh, uh, industry trade associations were petitioning that commission for different things. And, and, that, and that, that surprised me, frankly. That I, they, they were arguing with each other in front of the commission. It, it, yes, I mean, I can't, for the life of me, I can't understand. It, it, it seems as though they didn't get together the night before. We know they didn't get together the night before. And get well, their ducks they, they in didn't a, have to punch up, I don't know, but they certainly didn't reach any common ground on things. Well, the ducks definitely weren't in a row, were they? And I don't, I don't want to blow and steal all the thunder from all of this show in the opening five minutes, but then let's talk about flavourings at some point this evening as well. Oh, God, yes. You seem to have a division within one of the trade associations. Yes, absolutely. I mean, th there are a number of things that... Uh, that I find particularly surprising um, about the whole thing. Firstly, if we're talking in terms of um, a CETA being there, a CETA is there, in my mind, to represent all of its members. And yet one of the founding members of a CETA was also there, which to me, it kind of says, yeah, you know, you might be our spokesman, but actually I don't trust you. Well, yeah, and, may, and OK, just, just to play devil's advocate a bit, maybe it was a strategy to get six minutes instead of three. Uh, you know, I mean, that, that particularly for me, for me personally, wasn't a big issue. The, the division on the issue of flavourings. And, and, and ju ju just, just to, to, to really uh, sort, of, sort of say what my issue with that was, is the guy from Elites, the guy with the double-barrelled name, um, I forget what he tightly gave himself some kind of uh, director uh, of Eli stated that we don't do flavorings yes and, uh, and instead of ending his sentence at that point then went on to say we think they're inappropriate yes bang vapors you know yeah the, if, if you... that we were hoping we're gonna fight our corner well, there you go, straight away. We don't do flavours. We think they're inappropriate. I mean, we've, we've said this for a while, actually, because they're not alone. Uh, there's a number of um, the Lucky Lady companies that have 
never gone down the route of using flavors so that when it's come to something like this they can stand there and say yes we absolutely agree flavorings are bad and oh I, I, I felt sold down the river i've got to be honest that, that, that's exactly how I felt. Now, I, I, I just want to make it very clear from my point of view. I thought, I thought Catherine Devlin uh, and Tom there, uh, speaking for eSuiter, um, did as good a job as could be done under those circumstances. And maybe I'm saying that because I'm more aligned to what they were petitioning for than some of the others. Um, but I just got the feeling that... I wouldn't say they were sabotaged. People are entitled to their opinions and to debate them in meetings like that. But for me, as a vapor who wants to use 24 or 25 milligram DY4 in my device like I am at the moment, I didn't get a lot of help there. Easter were the only people that actually said, you know, petitioned to keep this stuff that I could tell, but I just don't think they were that effective. Well, I think uh, Dr. Farsalinos as well was saying pretty much the same thing, but so quickly and that he was it was a little difficult to understand and also i had the feeling i just got the feeling that the the panel with the exception of one person who i shall name later was doing a keith and nodding off um yeah. because of all the numbers and everything i think it just served to confuse and i made the point last night after i listened to that because i didn't hear it sort of real time because we couldn't find the recording could we I, I <laughs> but I listened to it last night, and then I made a point of going find going and finding Dr. Farolinos on Facebook and thanking him for his effort. Mm. Because let's face it, everything he actually said was uh, I considered to be right. It was aligned to what I wanted a an expert to be saying in that kind of arena. Problem is that it was quite clear from Linda McCavan's comments that, that he shouldn't have been there. That was not what the kind of discussion they wanted, and that they largely seemed to dismiss it. So I, again, as much as I like the message he got, I didn't see him making any inroads. That, they oh, just would seem like they were trying to shut him up. Frankly, that that unfortunately does appear to be the case. I mean, she said if if she'd wanted experts, um, she could have had experts, and. Uh, yeah, I've got a, sm a small crash going on here. There we go, that's better. Yeah. If, they'd want, if, they'd, <laughs> if, if they'd wanted experts, they could have asked for experts, but they could have as many experts gainsaying what Dr. Farsalinos was saying as would agree with him. That was the impression that came across. And it, yeah. you kind of get the impression she's saying, yeah, yeah, we've heard it all before. We don't want to hear that now. We're actually wanting to hear why the industry or what the industry wants to occur and why yeah. they want it to occur and we can we can get all of the the facts and figures from the medics and what have you later on and and it, you're right in what you say i mean everything that came across was you know you've got you've got a light saying this is not a tobacco product you've got the guy from holland saying please make it a tobacco product then you get enjoy saying it's not a tobacco product how much business have they got in the eu anyway anyway well, and that's a really good question, actually. But, you know, he's a stakeholder. I don't think there was a minimum turnover requirement. He had his right to his opinion. Absolutely. Then we've got Teveka saying it is a tobacco product and we want it to be a tobacco product. And, and you know... I think the, hard, the ones I personally found hardest to align with, to be honest. Uh, it, it, classification as a tobacco product might get you out of this... Uh, frying pan that is the tobacco products directive or, or the medical regulation proposal but you're definitely in the fire aren't you and we're, we're seeing the consequences in the US now have been classified as as a tobacco product now I, know, I had a quick look at the TVECA website earlier and a guy called Ray Story mm -hmm. and he's the CEO of TVECA and I'm not sure if he was the guy speaking in Brussels Don't think so. uh, clearly it's a primarily American organization but I just reading the write up on the TVECA website, you know, he it claims that Ray Story initiated the litigation against the FDA claiming the e-cig was indeed a tobacco product and they spent tobacco wrong on their own website and not a drug delivery device. Um, you know, so so I think I think that path is fraught with danger. And what it might get us a stay of execution for a little while, um, but I, I really think it's frying pan to fire to go down that route and, and 
yeah, you know, you can't buy tobacco products on the internet is the first thing that springs to mind. Exactly right. And, and <laughs> so, so, so we, um, I, I really don't want to go that way. I, I, I question their motives, and and, uh, and and I'm not suggesting there's any sort of uh, sort of shady practice or anything going on, but I don't see that that is motivated by defeating this stupid revision to the TPD so we can continue to vote the way we want to. That's just to qualify what I mean there. Indeed. And, and I'm pretty sure that Sav has got a list as long as her arm, her leg and her hair combined of I'm comments and questions from chat. So Sav, it's Wait, over to what, you. What I'm going to do is divide them into different categories rather than just fire them all at okay. you at once. Okay. So at the top of the page I've got the flavourings debate. Um, Trace Fabes said, so it's because we all stop liking flavourings at the moment we turn 18, uh, which was regarding the, the bringing children into it. Yes. Mark Shaw said, no one makes the point that flavours lead people away from tobacco, hence making the return to normal smokes unappealing. Trace Fabes also says, the FDA banned all flavoured cigarettes in the US except for the one flavour that actually sells, menthol. Flavoured cigarettes never accounted for more than a tiny fraction of cigarette sales. It's ludicrous. Vaping Daz says, flavours are far, far from inappropriate. It's what makes vapors who we are today. Kronos says, so what is tobacco if not a flavour? FMRL said, so vendors might up selling unflavoured nick and flavouring separate so we all have to mix our own. Happy vaping. I don't want it to taste like a cigarette. It makes me want to have a cigarette once again or a cigar. The flavourings that don't taste of tobacco keep me from going back to them. An egomaniac said, I thought flavours were the whole attraction to zero neck e shisha. So are the e shisha cigs going to be included in this as well? Oh, I can answer that one. As the, as the TPD revision currently stands, e shisha is not caught by it. It's that simple. Um, if that was what you wanted to use, they're not going to disappear. If, if things go ahead as they stand, Ishisha will be available. That's all that will be available. So the whole notion of, um, well, let, let me show Is you. That though? Is that right? Yeah. Well, I, I mean, because the, the, the get out, if you like, there's an exclusion, you know, uh, for, uh, of a need for an MA for products below four milligrams. Yeah. No, it's the other way on. It's above four, milli four milligrams. It has to have an MA. Yeah, that's my point. So, so for four milligrams and below, it's clear to use. It's clear to use, but with suitable health warnings and stuff. I thought was the the, the wording. So it, it 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 doesn't need an MA, but it's still included. That's what I thought. Oh, it's it's included in it's included under the tobacco product directive revisions. Yes, but that they wouldn't be taken off the market if. There would no, but they'd still have to have health warnings and stuff, which would be completely bloody irrelevant. If that's what they've decided to do, yes. Um, it makes no sense. No, it <laughs> does, I mean, what, what will be removed from the market, um, or what will be unusable, what you won't be able to get, will be that. You won't be able to get a bottle of juice of any size, whether yep. it's 50 mil. Well, what you might be able to get is a two mil, no, a half mil file. That's it. Just half yep. a mil. That that would be the lot, and it could contain no more than two milligrams of nicotine. That would be that would be all you would be able to get. So the likes of these lovely big BCCs, no waste of time. Can't fill them. Well, you could, but you'd have to buy God knows how many files to do. I mean, the bottom line on it is, to me at any rate, the likes of uh, e lights and Enjoy and some of the, the Tveka people and and various others they actually quite like this whole idea. They've got the money to go and, and, and do a marketing authorization um, application. The problem, the real problem I've got with this, if it goes ahead unchallenged, is that those member states that have a habit of jumping on whatever the EU says and multiplying it by three, will just get the stuff off the shelf straight away. And then there's gonna be a period of two years or more where the stuff that we like, even if it all goes to court and everything else, we're just yep. not going to be able to get it. This is exactly what happened in the States. And my, the point I, I feel everybody's missing here is very simple. If you can't get the juice that powers what you like to use, if that's not going to be available to you for two years, 
The fact of the matter is, 80% of the people out there, by figures that we've seen on all of the forums, will go up the corner shop and will buy cigarettes. Now, in two years' time, when all the court cases and everything gets settled, and stuff finally comes back on the market, how many e-cig users will there be in Europe? And the, the answer to that is going to be around about zero. And who, who then is going to go back to it? Seriously, who's going to... Do, well, I'll mark time for two years and just try and only smoke three fags a day. No, they'll go back to 20, 30, 40, in my case, 60, and in two years' time, it'll be a case of, ah, I feel all right, I'll not bother. They're going to end up killing folks that are currently vapors because they take them off the market if this isn't stopped one way or another. And, and as, as pessimistic as that may sound, if they get their own way, that is what's going to happen. I'm absolutely certain of that. I think you're right. You know what's just occurred to me, Dave, is uh, Professor John Britton yes. made a statement a few weeks ago, didn't he, that if all the smokers in the UK switch to e-cigs, then five million of them won't die. Is effectively what he said, wasn't it? Well, they won't die prematurely, yes. Exactly. Well, uh, yeah, fair point. <laughs> um, it might be useful to try and get Professor Britton to actually sort of reverse that and say, if e-cigs were taken away, what would that do to the predicted death toll due to smoking? Well, the corollary, I mean, the corollary is obvious. If by using e-cigs, five people will not suffer a premature death, then you can take 80% of that number, 5 million, pe uh, 5 million people, 80% um, of that number will stick with fags, the other 20% may or may not pack in, and 4 million people will die prematurely. The corollary is obvious. Um, which is probably a good point to take the ads because I can see <laughs> Sav is clattering away like a good in there, she's got a list as long as her arm. So we'll, let's, let's take a quick burst of adverts and uh, when we come back, we'll go straight to Sav and we'll hang on to Matthew Wright until the end because by then my blood will be That's properly where hanging. it belongs. Yeah, ah, sorry. Absolutely. No, you're right. You're not wrong. Um, so we will be back in a couple of minutes. Don't go anywhere. Keep typing into chat. Keep Sav busy. Welcome back to VT Talk here on VaporTrails.tv on Wednesday the 20th of March, the day after the EU cut the e-cig industry a new one. Sav, I'm going to knock it straight over to you because chat has been busy, we know that. What have they been saying? Right, I'll cover what chat have been saying about when regulation was brought up in the meeting. Um, I'll start off with Seabiscuit said, I'm not ill, it's not a medicine. Here, here. MJ Jones, yeah. MJ and Jordan 74 said there is the industry self-regulation and all these points I looked at already. Um, I didn't get the name of this one, I'm sorry, but um, mislabeling is a company issue, not a regulatory issue. Mark Shaw said asking for things to be banned just to protect your own prejudice is wrong on all levels. Mm -hmm. 
Lord Barbie said, um, the reps could not argue that nicotine comes from tobacco argument. Very pessimistic. They snatch defeat from the jaws of victory. Happy Vaping says, whatever works for their business, Dave, is what you heard. Oh. Sam Monroe says, recreational nicotine, set up a new regulation framework, I say. Jill CB says it should be left as a general consumer product and not categorised, just verify the regulations. And Ratfink has asked a question about can juice makers buy over 75 milligrams if this went through, if they held a licence? Uh, they would have to hold a licence, yes. Um, they, they would effectively hold a poisons licence, much the same as DV already does and, and any of the juice manufacturers in the UK do. They hold a poisons licence so they can buy it at whatever concentration they require. If they're really, really brave, they can get it pure. If they're not so brave, they can get it really at anything over 75 and then dilute it down to where they go. Interesting comment that about uh, what I like to refer to as the third way. And this is something that's been brought up many, many times when we've been talking about this, talking about regulation. And wasn't it really heartening to see that Martin Callanan sat in that meeting and actually suggested that. Um, yeah. I was a little bit disappointed that Linda McCavan kind of threw it off. I was a little bit more heartened when Martin had another go at it and said, look, we can do this. And then when she threw it off again, he said, yeah, but we're already palming it off to the medicines lot in so many words. And that actually shut her up. I was quite pleased by that. Did you pick that up too, Div? I did. I, I think his wording at the end there was was particularly clever, actually, when he pointed out that, you know, well, if the medical route isn't the way to go, and we don't think it should be in the Tobacco Products Directive either, then what is the third way, was, his, was the general slant to what he said, um, which was clever because <laughs> that's not the way that session was going. <laughs> No, not at all. Um, yes, again, skilled politicians, I guess. Um, but, yeah, I mean, wh whether he got that point home, who knows? Well, there's a point here. And, and if, if viewers remember um, what Clive Bates said last week, and if you can't remember, go and have a look at it. It's on YouTube. It's on our uh, video on demand systems all over the place. Go and, do go and have a look. And what, what Clive was saying was we need to continue the dialogue with MEPs that we've already spoken to. And yeah. that's not such a difficult job to do. Um, indeed, you don't need to just talk to your own MEP. Um, I've, I've got to be careful how I phrase all of this. I have a contact in Brussels, a very well-placed contact in Brussels. Um, and I... I'm not sure it's appropriate to share what that contact said about the meeting. Uh, let's just say the word shambles did themselves no favour and, and brewery were all mentioned. Um, beyond that, I, I really don't want to go too far into it. But what I'm hearing from that same contact and what Martin alluded to in what he was saying was that there's been a very good response from people on the ground and perhaps it's a good idea to, if, if the dialogue that you have with your MP and MEP hasn't been resurrected, it might be an idea to resurrect it and take on board some of these points and suggest that Martin Callanan's idea of a third way of regulation specifically for nicotine containing products that are not tobacco products within the meaning of the directive, no matter what Mr. E. Light and Mr. Tevecka have to say, um, and that are not medicines because it's broadly agreed that these things aren't medicines. So it needs a separate element of regulation. And that's something that we get a chance to get some input into. It might be a good idea to suggest that to your MEPs. And as a, by, a, a, a kind of a byproduct of that as well, it might be a good idea to suggest that the tobacco industry's had its say, the e-cig industry's had its say, but the people who will die early if the EU gets this wrong, i.e. us, we haven't had our say. And I'm absolutely certain that, I'll, I'll use the word the leaders of all the different forums, and there are many throughout the EU, would quite happily volunteer to go and sit in a room and get three minutes and then ask, ask, answer any questions that are asked. 
I'd be up for going like a shot. Um, it might be an idea to su suggest that to your MEP too, because if they are listening to what we're saying and judging by what Martin Callanan said they are, then perhaps we should be suggesting what we'd like to see go on. Dave, your views on that? I, I, th I think you've pretty much summed that up. I mean, uh, as far as I'm concerned, we're the important stakeholders in this. So the industry, uh, frankly. Yes. You know, uh, the, 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 the whole point of this for me is uh, as somebody who wants to use these products, I consider my point of view as a stakeholder every bit as important as the tobacco companies and the EC companies, frankly. Um, I think it's wrong that we haven't been engaged. I think it's wrong that our attempts to be involved so far have, well, they've fallen on deaf ears, really, haven't they? Is probably the best way to put it. Um, but I, I, I think this is a great idea. At the, end of the, at the end of the day, we've seen replies from MEPs, and some of them, and I won't, I won't mention the different political parties, some of them are clearly pro-regulation. Some of them are clearly hoping you'll vote for them at the next uh, <laughs> election. You know? Yes, sorry, I'm giggling here. I know who you're talking about. They actually vote for them. They, won't, they don't know, <laughs> but they you know, them at their own bloody game, you know. Um, uh, I've, I've seen, oh, I'll mention it. I mean, I, I saw a reply from uh, a UKIP MEP. They've seen this as a potential vote winner. So, uh, you know, you've got their ear. Now get, in, then now get in their face, you know, and suggest to them, you know, why is nobody asking? I mean, that, that, that could be the text of the mail. I, I'm watching these proceedings unfold. It looks like we're doomed. Why is nobody asking us what we think? Mm. Let's see what they come back with. Can well, we come to Brussels and tell you what really matters in all of this? Uh, that, 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 that's exactly what we need to be doing. We need to make our voices heard. Now, the fact of the matter is, I mean, to some degree, we've, we've given the uh, e-cigarette industry a little bit of a smack on the backside here, a kick up the backside, and, and I'm not 100% convinced that it's, if you like, all their fault. I think they've been played. I think they've been played from the start. But I think it's also the case that they've been tarred with the same brush as the big tobacco manufacturers. And Lord knows, they've had such a kick in over the last 25 years. You've just got to look at the World Health Organization and how down they are. I mean, if you work for the WHO, if you work in the tobacco control part of WHO, if you're even seen within 50 yards of somebody that works for Big Tobacco, then you're kicked out and, and summarily dismissed from the core sort of style. Um, so I, I think to a large degree that the, the MEPs uh, in Brussels will have tarred the electronic cigarette trade bodies with exactly the same sort of brush and it's kind of they really have got to be very 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 convincing in order to be heard i'm pretty sure that they're not uh, they're not gonna have the kind of credibility that i personally think users real on the ground users have we have no axe to grind as e-cig users as vapors we have no axe to grind what what we're doing, for whatever reason you started using e-cigs, it really doesn't matter. You are prolonging your active life. And it's got nothing to do with dog food. You are. You're prolonging your active life by not smoking cigarettes. That's what these things do. And I don't care what anybody says about, we don't know what PG does to you over an extended period. I do. I've breathed gallons of it in every night in the entertainment industry, and I'm not alone, there's bazillions of us have, and it's, it's just not an issue. I'm sorry, I'm starting to rant again. Dave, I need to throw it across to you because my blood's boiling, and if I don't throw it, I'll well, say hey, something I shouldn't. It strikes me as a bloody good time to rant, frankly. I mean, the, the frustration that, that, that I feel inside me at the moment, you know, I think that's what we all want to do, but, um, but the fact of the matter is it won't change much. We, we, we've got to... I, you know, we, we've got to find a way to get to these guys and get our point of view across. Um, there was no... You were asking earlier about things, you know, so things that, you know, points that stood out from that session yesterday. And, and another one that stood out for me, that there was no concept of a vapour. The whole thing was geared towards people trying to quit cigarettes and quit nicotine. Hmm. 
It was all about cessation, nothing about recreation. I mean, there were a couple of little references to it, but um, but it was all about keeping off fags and not something recreational, i.e. a personal choice. Yeah, but because what this boils down to for me is, right, why do they want to stop me doing it? It's not harming anybody. It's not, I'm, you know, I'm far less likely to cost the NHS a fortune in my later years than if I was smoking. And I, and I think that, that, that there's a general sort of lack of understanding about the whole concept of vaping. I genuinely do. I, I think you're not, you're not wrong. I mean, you know, you listen to everything, even, well, the, the guys that were there were talking in terms of tobacco harm reduction. I don't, I don't actually remember anybody using the term per se as tobacco harm reduction, but I'm pretty sure I'm safe in saying that it's a concept that is fairly alien to the majority of MEPs, probably because it hasn't been explained to them correctly or at all in a lot of cases. And again, this is part of the dialogue that we need to be having, all of us individually as users, when we converse with our MEPs by email. And always remember to put, I look forward to hearing your reply, because then they've just, got to. Just to interject there, I thought there was some reference to THR towards the end there, and Linda McCavan cuffed it off, as that's a whole, a whole other debate. Um, that, was, that was snooze. Um, she knocked it off, the, the whole snooze thing, um, and snooze is better than e cigs e cigs is better than snooze. Suggestion of THR that took her to that. Yes, you know? yes. Uh, it, it, it's, um, <laughs> yeah, it's kind of, it's still quit or die. It's quit or die, folks. Yes. and, and uh, options that they want to give us. If, if we don't disabuse them of that, that's, that's where we're going to end up. Like I say, if this thing goes through unchanged, then everything that you love about the ECG you have in your hand, and I don't care what it looks like, everything you love about it will be taken away from you. Absolutely everything. Trust me on this one. It'll be Ishisha or fags. That's the way it's going to be. Sav, I'm going to throw it across to you because blood's starting to boil again, but I can see your eyes flying about like a good one. I have got absolutely loads. I'll try and get as much of it through as I can. Um, <laughs> Gary Wood has said they are going to force people back to a more harmful option, but they will make more money killing them. Moonlit says medically authorised e cigs are unlikely to be cheap. There's no reason for them not to be cheap, but the only player in the game and they become a medicine, which means they're somehow worth more. Mm -hmm. Big Craig, they don't care about how many people die as long as there's legislation, as their legislation leads them to being able to tax our age use in some way. Um, we've got quite a few good comments about Martin. Um, a question from Jill CB who's asking how would or if it's even possible for the average person to get a poisons license? Not. Um, not. Not. Right. Just not. Um, again, also. Um, I think that was already covered about the mainstream juice makers. Would they require a poisons license if this went through? Yes, they do anyway. Yeah. Um, Thundercat says, it's really good that it's not being swept under the carpet. We must be having an effect, even if we don't get the result we want. Um, Gary would also said, there is no or little regulation on alcohol or caffeine, so why nicotine? Jill CB's also said, power to the end users, us. Lee said, if nicotine was added to a beverage, just like caffeine is already, wouldn't it be treated in the same, would it be treated in the same way as e cigs are being treated now? Yes. Um, Winter Rogue says, the problem, though, as stated on the UK Vapors Forum by Thursday, is that it's not about the poisons, etc. It's about the demoralisation of smokers. They want us to quit or die. Mm -hmm. Um Regarding people being sent to represent our case, there was a lot of people saying they would like to see both you and uh, Dave Kitson. And Very Boring said, could you also bring Kat because he would like to see us swinging at a few of them with their bobo. Yeah, um, I think the feeling though, if we took Kat, we would also need to take some bodyguards to protect everybody else that's there. And, and some damn good lawyers. Yes, <laughs> because I'm, I'm not sure we'd be, able to, we'd be able to get her off the murder charges. <laughs> <laughs> um, Mark Shaw said people are calling oh yeah before I do this there's been a, a little mini debate going on in chat about banning cigarettes 
And Mark Shaw has said, people calling for cigarette eggs to be banned won't do our cause any favours. It's the same as the stakeholders contradicting each other about classing e-cigs as tobacco products and stopping flavours. It's short-sighted and self-serving, which ultimately leads us down the wrong path. Here, here. That, I, I yeah. mean, seriously, honestly, people, if, 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 if I never get to say anything else again, I'll say this. The word ban should be banned. Prohibition never, ever achieved anything. All it ever does is make things more dangerous. No I, matter I have to agree on that. I've just got to interject and I'm, no one being rude. But, but you know, just because, you know, we don't generally use cigar lights, although watch Dave's Tackle Box on Sunday and you'll see something <laughs> that might be Plug. Um, plug. Plug. Um, but the, 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 for me... I don't want them telling me what I can and can't do if I choose to. And if people want to use cigar likes, then they should be allowed to. I'm going to, I'm going to bang the table. There. He did as well. Um, he I, did. Seriously, you know, on, on, on Saturday at the knees, mate, that I have no footage from, but I'm on a fair amount, um, <laughs> I, I, was, I was sitting sucking on a Nicolite. It was all right. It's okay. It, you know, it's fine. I mean, I don't, I don't like the form factor. I don't like the fact that from a distance they can be mistaken, but please, 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 let's not be divided the way it would appear our, our vendor organisations were divided in Europe, because that's a tactic that the savvy politician will employ an awful lot. Divide and rule. It's the, the biggest, it's exactly what they've done, isn't it, with smokers. They've divided... I... That's what they've done. They've, they've divided smokers off from the rest of the population. They've demonised them. They've de trying to denormalise the practice. And they're going to try and do the same with us. We've got to sing off the same hymn sheet. All of us. All the time. All together. We've got to come together as one. We've got to bury all the hatchets that have been up there. Yes, we've been critical of what happened yesterday. But as I say, it's not exactly their fault. Um, we've got to have everybody singing off the same hymn sheet and then typing that hymn sheet out and sending it to MAPs all the time, every time. Dave, yes. Can I, because you mentioned meats, sort of seamlessly segue into 10 seconds of your time. You have a plug, get it in before the adverts. I got an email earlier, it says, Hi all, this is the second meeting of the LSE Vapors. And I'm not actually sure, uh, London and South East Vapors. Uh, it's the second meeting of the LSE Vapors. It will be held at the Green Man. 57 Berwick Street, Soho, London. Uh, it starts at 6.30 on Saturday. There you go. This Saturday, that'll be, what, the 23rd yes. of March. Uh, 6.30 at the Green Man, 57 Berwick Street, Soho. Uh, everybody's welcome. There you go. They've Cut. got a Facebook page. Facebook.com forward slash London and South East Vaping Meets. Or one word. Could they murder it any longer? It would have been difficult. <laughs> <laughs> but I promised that I would give a plug in. Sorry for hijacking your show. That's all right. It's not a problem. There's the plug. You know me. I love meat. So if I could get, I would go. But I cannot because the kitchen is nearly finished. And apparently I've got to put the pans back in. But that's a story for another day. Um, we'll take the adverts. And when we get back, we're going to lynch. No, we're going to watch the uh, Matthew Wright thing. Back in two.
and welcome back to VT Talk here on Wednesday the 20th of March and it's at the moment it's 9.45. We've just had a conflab the three of us and we've decided here's what we're going to do. This is all way too important. Um, we're going to do VT Talk in two halves. Tomorrow night we're going to carry on what would be the Hayes Hour. We'll have Daz and we'll have Keith and we'll have Dave and we'll have Sav and we're going to carry it on. We'll do the Matthew Wright thing tomorrow night. I mean, it's kind of a change to our advertised schedule, but this is way too important. Um, and yeah, you know, it's not the end of the world as we know it, but it could be if we don't get this sorted out and get it right. So that's what we're going to do. If everybody's in agreement, all, all in favour in chat say aye. That's the easiest way to do it. Um, and I think the best thing to do actually is throw it to chat, which means throwing it to Sav, because she's got a list four pages, she says, and we've only done one. This is why we're going to do it in two halves. Sav, it's over to you. Right, I'll start with a couple of questions. That Well, actually, I'll start with um, something that Ed West has said a couple of times, that he watched the debate and he took a lot more positives out of it than we seem to have done. And he's asking, why do you say that they aren't listening? Why do we say that they aren't listening? It's, it's the questions that they've come back with and the statements that they make. Like, how many of us have written in to say that a flavoured juice is what keeps us away from going back to tobacco? And if you think about the sense of it, I, I think I saw it going up and you mentioned it from in chat. If somebody makes the change from whatever cigarette you care to mention or a pipe or a cigar or anything else, and they find... An, Go on, I'll say the phrase, Grant's Vanilla Custard, <laughs> right? If they find that, and the very notion of the taste of a tobacco cigarette in comparison to what I am assured is the absolute delight of Grant's Vanilla Custard stops them from going back to the fag. And if when they get bored of the GVC, they go to, and I hate to mention this, Sav's Fire and Ice, for, a, for instance or Yeroon's fire and ice, for instance, and please God. Well, but yeah, if the idea of these, what some might consider to be outrageous flavours, stops them from going back to a cigarette, then it's successful. But what you're hearing, or what I heard from Linda McCavan was, but flavourings just get kids hooked. And we hear it trumped out so many, and I use the word trumped, advisedly because a large portion of the time anyway it's where they're talking out of they keep on bringing this out think of the kids and they're not listening to what they're being told if they were listening and they understood well if they were listening they would understand that the and everybody knows i'm not a great flavor hound sav you know you can confirm yeah i'm not a flavor hound there are three Flavours I use, and they are all broadly tobacco flavours. That said, they are very sweet. Um, I've just noticed there that, that Ed has just replied and said flavours are a minor detail, and as it was his question that we were answering, okay. um, I, I'll just give you another perspective. I heard that meeting in full, mm -hmm. as somebody who is used to sort of, uh, you know, sort of negotiations in, in meetings and politics and all the rest of it, and I just saw an ineffectual group trying to persuade somebody who had already made up their minds on the path they are following. I've seen it all the time. The fact that it happened to be a, 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 a meeting of a committee in Brussels as opposed to the sort of meetings I'm generally involved in, the pattern was clear. I, I would agree. I mean, I, I... there was no, no sensible dialogue there was the, uh, an expert, I have to say, grudgingly, that Linda McCavan expertly cuffed off just about every point made. She's, she, I mean, I, what, what I saw and what I heard with Linda McCavan, and I've seen her doing it before, she has this, this method of falling over her tongue. She bumbles. Yeah, I don't that. She bumbles <laughs> around sentences. And then all of a sudden, you can, just, you can see the sights come in and then boing, point made, somebody shot down. As easy as. It's what she does. Um, 
And, and it's, it's one of the traits of a good politician that they lull you into a false sense of security and then throw something at you that you're not prepared for. And that's exactly what's happening. There are people that are sitting on this committee that are out and out anti-nicotine and tobacco zealots. It's and Dave, th th yeah, th there are plenty of them there. I totally agree. I, I'm not actually convinced that that is why Linda McCavern is, is, is ploughing this the way that she is. And it's simpler than that. She has been just like if anybody's ever worked in projects in the world of business, right? Somebody gets given the job of get that through, mm -hmm. negotiating, get it through. And Linda McCavern has a track record of getting it done. So whatever her motivation, I don't know whether she's one of the ants or not. Um, but I see somebody who is steamrolling this through so she can get the job done and get on to the next one. That's what she, she looks like to me. I, I can't disagree. I mean, it was said at the, at the open, the public meeting, where they discussed it the first time, that she intended to get it through to make sure that it was enacted during the course of this European Parliament. Because if it gets to the end of the, uh, of the current Parliament, it's got to start all over again. And that's another however long it takes. Um, which is, you know, that, 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 that's, that's the whole point. She, she's actually got an end date in mind that's when it's all got to be done by and she would like to see it all happen on the 9th of september that all the nods all the eyes all the boxes are ticked and it goes through on the 9th of september so it can be enacted in member states during the course of 2014 that's how soon we're looking at she said in in uh, in the meeting that we were listening to earlier um, that she intends to have her report drafted by the end of the month and yet my contacts in Brussels are telling me it would normally take another six weeks from where we are now to get that done. I this have to say, it seems like a bloody good choice to get this job done if you're the EU uh, Envy Committee. Oh, absolutely. If, if you want to see this through, she's a damn good choice to get it done. She, as you say, she's got a track record of being able to get these things through in double quick time. And she's got shadow rapporteurs, not, it has to be said, Martin Callanan. Uh, but she does have other shadow rapporteurs that are also forsworn to get it through as quickly. She's going to get all the assistance that she wants. It's why we, as users, as the, as the real stakeholders, have got to act now. Not next week, not the week after. We've got to act now. We've got to try and get our points put across. We can't sit on our thumbs and wait for other people to do it because, as we've heard from this, it's not going to work. We've got to do it. She force of numbers we have got to do it so what else have we got coming through right we've got stuff which sort of ties in what you were talking about <coughs> there which was about um dr faris Salinos. um mark shaw has said people who speak the truth normally speak with conviction gary dibley has said a lot of passion but in this type of meeting his point is totally lost too long too far and too much Winter Rogue says, problem is because they don't know what they are talking about. They won't know what he is talking about either. Gary has said regarding um, Linda McCavan, she is one smart woman, picks one point and shoots you down. All his points lost in one swoop. Yep. Mark Shaw also says, but the point does get lost. He is the only person she is talking down to directly. Mark Van Basten said they should have had a meeting between themselves first to put forward E and in front instead of looking like fools. And Kronos said she's got a job to do. She doesn't care about the content, just the result. I, I just pick out one point there. I think it was Marco's point. Uh, yes, it would have been great if the uh, ECG trade associations could have agreed what they were going to say and provided a united front, without a doubt. Well, let's be blunt, guys. Anybody who hasn't had their head buried in the sand for the last couple of years knew that was not going to happen. There are factions within the trade industry or uh, trade associations. Yeah, and uh, I mean, it, each of them has their own uh, little baby, I suppose you would call it. You know, the people that only sell lucky likeies only sell lucky likeies, and they only want lucky likeies on the market. Let's face it, rightly or wrongly. In business, you seek to achieve a monopoly or as close to a monopoly as you can get. You want more of the market than anybody else. And it seemed fairly obvious to me that there were people in that meeting that were looking to get as much of the market as they could by using the EU 
in whatever way they could and the fact that that doesn't help us as vapors is just there it's what business does it's what business has always done and you know you can't knock them for that but you can knock them for not fighting our corner but they're not there to fight our corner they're there to fight theirs we've got to fight our corner there's nobody's going to fight it for us that's yep. the problem nobody's going to fight our corner for us we've got to fight it ourselves and i keep on saying this we are the buggers that are going to bloody die if they get this wrong we are the ones we are the guinea pigs we've got to make our voices heard and if we don't we deserve everything the eu throws at us and i'm ranting again sav any more yes i've had a couple of questions that have come in gillis has said what's the likelihood they can redefine the definition to tobacco derived products um I think it's safe to say that the way they're standing at the moment, they can define anything any way they like. That's a, that a, appears to be what they're doing. This thing seems to have gained a life of its own as far as the EU is concerned. It's got its own momentum and it seems to be that everybody wants to see this steamroller through. And I don't think like sort of technical details like legality are going to slow it down much, frankly. It, it, it certainly seems to be the case that they want this done now they want this done because of tobacco that that is the bottom line tobacco is the big enemy that's the way they've got it and what they're forgetting is that actually tobacco isn't the enemy the enemy is copd the enemy is lung cancer the enemy is cancer of the pancreas it's cancer of the throat it's all of these other nasty things that can happen if you smoke tobacco but that's the enemy and what, what they're doing is, we are just collateral damage. She wasn't expecting any kind of, I've forgotten what the word is, but she wasn't expecting the e -cig thing, none of them were expecting the e -cig thing, to be as contentious as it is, as contentious as we've made it, as contentious as you've made it, people out there. And kudos to you for doing that, but we've got to make it more contentious still. We're not there yet. We're not there yet. We've got them listening. Now we've got to kick them. Exactly right. We've, if you like, the kickoff's being done. The goal kicks. I'm, you know, I'm going to try and talk football here, and there's nobody less qualified to do that. Everybody listen. Pay attention today. <laughs> <laughs> the bottom line on it is the puck is now on the ice, and it's hurtling towards the opposition goal. We've That's now got to get. I know it's not football, but I used to play ice hockey. We've now got to get everybody together and get the puck at the back of the net. We've got to do everything possible, everything in our power. We have got to get these dialogues going with MEPs, with MPs. We need to be writing to that Lords Committee that we looked at last week. All of these things are things that we've got to do. Now, we're coming up towards the end of the show. Um, Sav, I'm going to give it to you for a couple of pointed comments from chat because i know there's loads there and the important people are the people that are watching this we they are the important ones they've got the last word go for it right the last words from chat we've got winter rogue says it must be difficult to understand if you've never smoked in the first place to understand what we're all on about playing devil's advocate happy happy vaping said haven't they got to play devil's advocate in these discussions in order to get the answers they need to answer the same questions amongst their peers Thundercat has said, we, know, we knew this, is, this was coming. Why, as an industry, were we not prepared? And the final word has to go to Moonlit tonight, and he says, quit or die. I wish they would. <laughs> and that, I think, pretty much sums it up. We're going to carry this on tomorrow night in what will probably be called the Hairs Hour, but it's going to be VT Talk with five people involved. Lord knows how we'll control that. Um, but I've got to say thank you to everybody for tuning in and watching. You are the most important people in this. Thanks to Sav for doing her usual job and for Kat and Daz who will have been throwing the questions at you. Thanks, Dave, for coming along and, uh, and, and sharing your knowledge of how these things work, which I rely on a lot. Um, but most of all, as I say, thank you to everybody for tuning in and watching, whether it's live or whether it's video on demand. You are the most important people in this, but it's you that's got to carry on the fight. So until we see you tomorrow night from all of us here, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you tomorrow. Until then, bye-bye.